Alrighty, in this video we're going to talk about an exposure and also the three pillars or the three kings of photography. Um, so let's start off by defining what an exposure is. An exposure is the amount of light that reaches your camera sensor. Um, and that is determined by these three kings of photography, which are <clears throat> shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. And these are extremely, extremely, extremely important in photography. Um, <clears throat> if you can master these three things, you're going to take your images from being very basic, you know, what you get from a point-and-shoot camera, to professional-looking photographs, just by understanding these three things. Uh, they're a little bit difficult to get to, to wrap your head around at first, but as you um, study them, understand what they do, and then go out and practice, you're going to be able to master them uh, pretty quickly. Um, <clears throat> so, um, an exposure, as I mentioned, is the amount of light that reaches the, sen the sensor. Um, back in the days of film, it was the amount of light that, reaches, that, that got to the film. Um, but even in the days of film, film had uh, different levels of sensitivity to light. So you could purchase film that was very sensitive to light, meaning you wouldn't need as much light coming into the camera, or you could purchase some that wasn't very sensitive to light, um, <clears throat> which would mean you would need relatively more light coming into the, to the camera. And the same goes with the digital sensor that we have in our digital cameras. Um, <clears throat> So, it's, as I mentioned, the amount of light that reaches the sensor. Um, a properly exposed image is one where the, light, the lighting is correct. Uh, one that is overexposed is one where there's too much light, and it makes the, the picture look too bright. Uh, one that's underexposed is one that is too dark because there was not enough, enough light getting to the sensor. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about how the kind of how the camera works, because you really need to understand how that works um, in order to understand how these three pillars, these three uh, <clears throat> components of aperture really work. So what happens when you take a picture, light passes through your camera's lens, and there's a number of different pieces of glass in this lens. Um, and then when you press the shutter release button, you hear that click. You know, what's happening is, is it's opening and it's closing and it's happening very quickly if you have a fast shutter speed um, so when you open and close that okay you could hear that that one was slower as long as that's open light is coming into the camera body and reaching the sensor and so these three components are managing how much light is getting into the camera and also how sensitive the camera sensor is to that light so the three components are shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Shutter speed is probably the most easy to understand. The shutter speed is how long the shutter is open. Um, obviously, the longer you leave it open, the more light is going to enter into the camera. The shorter, the less light is going to enter. So each one of these three components has a primary effect and a secondary effect. <clears throat> and so the primary effect of the shutter speed is obviously how much light is getting into the camera. The secondary effect of shutter speed is called motion blur. Um, so if you're taking a picture of a moving object and your shutter speed is very slow, let's say one-fifth of a second, you're going to see that that object is blurry because it's moved from one point to another during <clears throat> the time uh, that the shutter was open. <clears throat> now, if you boost your shutter up very fast to, let's say, one four thousandth of a second, if there was a moving object object in your, in your image, it would be frozen. <clears throat> and so the cool thing about the shutter speed is you can do a lot of really cool things. Um, if you're taking, for example, a picture of a car or, let's say, um, an athlete who's, who's in motion, if you use a really fast shutter speed, you can freeze that and make them very clear. Or, I'm sure you've seen pictures of, uh, let's say, waterfalls where 
so the photographer used a long exposure, let's say 10 seconds, and you saw a completely smooth, you know, the water was completely smooth, um, and, and it looked very smooth and calm. Um, so those are two examples of, of when you have a really fast shutter speed versus a really slow shutter speed. Um, so that's the first component, shutter speed. The second component is what's called the aperture. Um, the aperture is the size that of the hole through which the light is coming through. So inside your lens, you can tell your lens what, which, which, uh, how large or small you want that hole to be. So pretty intuitively, the larger the hole, the more light is going to come in. Um, that's the primary effect. The secondary effect of the, sh of the aperture size is that is what we call depth of field or depth of focus. That is the amount of your image that is in focus versus that which is blurry. So the larger the aperture, the larger the hole, the less of your image is going to be in focus. So I'm sure you've seen pictures of, uh, let's say, a flower, where one flower was totally in focus, super sharp, um, but then a flower that was just behind it or in front of it was very blurry. And in that case, they would have used a very large aperture, and that's what caused that shallow depth of field. So when you have a shallow depth of field, that means the foreground and the background are blurry. Conversely, if you use a very small aperture, um, a very small hole, then more of your image is going to be in focus. If you use a really small one, then just about everything in your picture is going to be in focus. Um, <clears throat> so, again, aperture, the primary effect is the amount of light coming in. Uh, more, more light for a relative amount of, of time. Um, the secondary effect is the depth of field or depth of focus. <clears throat> um, the third uh, pillar of photography is the ISO. Um, the ISO is the camera's sensitivity to light. So the first two components, shutter speed and aperture, are the determinants of the amount of light that is reaching the sensor. And then the third component, the ISO, is how, is the, is how sensitive that sens sensor is to um, the light that's coming in. So it doesn't have any effect on the amount of light coming in, but it does have an effect on um, basically the sensitivity of that light to the sensor. So to give you an example of what that means, if you have a very low ISO, that means the camera is not very sensitive to light. So you're going to need to either slow your shutter speed or open your aperture up wider so that you can get more light to that sensor. If you bump up the ISO and make the camera sensor more sensitive to light, then you can make the shutter speed faster or you can make the aperture size smaller. Um, <clears throat> And that's kind of how that works. Now, so obviously the primary effect of the ISO is the sensitivity. When you bring up the ISO, the sensor becomes more sensitive to light. Now, the secondary effect, which is a negative effect, is as you bring up that ISO, you're going to cause more digital grain, um, or what we call noise. So that's going to affect the clarity and the sharpness of your image. Um, so, a general rule of thumb is you want to keep your ISO as low as possible. Um, and ISO ranges anywhere from about 100 to, in my camera, it goes all the way up to 6400. Um, so you're probably asking, well, why would we ever want to bump, bump it up to something like 6400? And really, the only time I bump it up to 6400 is if I'm taking images of the stars or something that's extremely, extremely dark. Um, but you do get a bunch of noise, um, but luckily with the, the editing software that we have available, we can, we can reduce that dramatically, um, which is something that we'll get into later. So anything between 100 and 200, you're not going to notice a difference. It's going to be very sharp. Um, 
but once you go up from there, then you're going to see a little bit more, um, a little bit more noise in your images. So you want to keep that as low as you possibly can. Um, and to understand how, you know, at what level you're going to have that, and you know, you're really going to have to go out and practice. And that's the case with with the shutter speed and the aperture. Um, you really need to get out. And you need to practice because you know you can read about it and hear about it all you want, but until you actually go out and shoot a number of different things, um, it's going to be difficult for you to really understand um, how to use it. So just to recap, the three pillars of photography are aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. They are what determine our exposure, the exposure of the image. And keep in mind that these are the, th the three main components of photography that are going to separate someone who's a beginner versus someone who is um, able to create professional looking images. Um, so thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please list them below and um, watch the next video that's coming up. Thanks.